Good morning and thank you for joining me for today's midweek reflection. This coming Sunday is the fifth Sunday of Lent and it marks the beginning of a kind of season within a season that we call Passion Tide. Passion Tide is the last two weeks of Lent. And it's not something that's uh, universally observed across Christianity. The more Protestant strands of the Christian Church don't really make anything of Passion Tide. But within the Anglo Catholic tradition, and within the Roman Church, and within the Eastern Orthodox Church, it is uh, very keenly observed. And its very physical manifest manifestation is there when you go into uh, more Catholic churches. And you'll see all of the crosses, uh, all of the ornaments and all of the pictures in church are completely covered up. They're covered up in purple, which is the colour of Lent. And it sort of reminds us that this was a time, the period just before Jesus' uh, arrest and his crucifixion, when he took himself away, when he hid himself when he withdrew. Passion, and by that I mean suffering, is very, very much at the heart of Jesus' story. And therefore, it is something that is so deeply fundamental to Christianity itself. And these next couple of weeks, more than any other time in the church's calendar, are when that comes quite intensely into focus. Of course, it begs that oldest of questions, which all people of faith are asked, quite rightly. Why? Why does God allow suffering? If you think about those thousands of people who have fled their homes and their communities in Ukraine over the last month, many, many, many of them, perhaps even majority, are people who would identify themselves as Christians, and they might quite reasonably say, why does God allow this to happen? Or even, where is God? And yet, it's a strange thing. When I was at a point in my life, when I was drifted away a bit from Christianity and was searching and was thinking deeply about my place in this world and where does God fit into it. I remember thinking particularly about how Christianity sat alongside the other major faiths of the world, all of which have quite helpful things to say to us. But I remember thinking that there was something profoundly real, there was something really authentic, there was something deeply, deeply true about a God who chooses to become a human being, about a God who chooses to expose himself to all of the horror, all of the pain, all of the misery that human beings actually can encounter. So as we go through these last two weeks of Lent, I think I want to say let's be honest about all of the suffering, all of the pain that we do see around us in this world. But let's also remember that for Christians, suffering really is never the end of the story. I'd like to read to you the poem simply called Passion Tide by the writer Sarah Ingle. Take your place, child. Take your full place in the world. You deserve to be here. There's no more to fear. Take your place, child. Show your face. Show your face, child. Show your full face to the world. You deserve to be seen. No more reason to hide. Show your face, child. There's no disgrace. 
No disgrace, child. No more disgrace in the world. You deserve to stand tall. Speak your truth out for all. There's no disgrace, child. Speak your truth. Speak your truth, child. Speak your whole truth to the world. I was held down and raped. Hand clamped hard on my face. Speak your truth, child. Breathe your breath. Breathe your breath, child. Breathe your full, deep breaths in the world. You can open your mouth. You are free to shout out. Breathe your breath, child. Speak your heart. Speak your heart, child. Speak your full heart to the world. You are free to love true. No more shackles for you. Speak your heart, child. Love your world. Our hymn for today is My Song is Love Unknown. Thank you.